Hello, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of how to build a master schedule table using Infinite Campus and Google Sheets. Sometimes this is helpful in looking at uh, what a teacher or a user or a student is doing throughout the day, maybe what room they're in, maybe what course they have, all those kind of things. So we're going to start with the SIS system here, which is Infinite Campus. And whoever's building this would have to have access to do a query to this information. I'm going to go into Campus Tools. And I'm going to do Filter Designer. And for this one, I'm going to focus on doing teacher's courses for teaching schedule. Do a Query Wizard and select Course and Section. I need to give it a name. And in this case, I'll call it Video Master Schedule Demo. All right, now there's quite a few things that you're going to need to pull over into the selected fields. And they're mostly in the course information and section information. Um, and we also need the school name. So I'm going to open up school and then pull in the school name. And then under course information, I want to get the course name. That's just helpful no, to know uh, when they're teaching which item. And for some of the other stuff, let's see if we can just search for it in this box. So we have some of these former ones that I put in. Um, I'm going to search for term start. So if I type out term start, it'll filter down to the place that will have that information. So I want term start because that's going to we're going to make sure that we're doing the current term, whether it's semester one or semester two. We also want period start. So I'll search for that. That's also in section information and I'm going to pull it from section schedule here. And now let's get some information like room name. I'm going to type the word room and see if I can pull up this room type section. Here it is, room name. That's uh, That will give, like if it was in room 101 or, or D1000 or, or D41, it'll, it'll output the room name there. Uh, we want the teacher display, so I'm going to type display that will probably be in the section information. Teacher display, that's the teacher name, last name, comma, first name. I also would like the teacher email in case I wanted to send something out to these people. So I'll search for email and then teacher email. So we have teacher email, teacher display, room name, period start, term start, course name, and the school name. All these items together should be enough. If we need to go back and redo it, that's okay. Now here in this page, after I click Next, I can already start filtering uh, and, and to choose specific ones. The only thing that I want to filter right now is just to make sure I'm in the current term. As I'm building this, I'm in second semester, and that would be typed as S2. Uh, I could always pull both first semester and second, and then filter this later within a pivot table, but just for my sake, I'm going to go ahead and filter that now. As I click next, I check mark that I want to output everything, and I will go ahead and save and test. I could export this directly in the data export area, I believe, but it, I always find it helpful to, to make sure I'm pulling the data that I'm intending to pull. So when I click save and test, I'll get a new tab open here or a pop-up if I was not in full screen. And then I'm going to see the school name, the semester, the period, the room number or room name, uh, and then the teacher information. Now I'm going to go ahead and click export to an Excel file. It's going to be export for.
And now I want to put that into a Google Sheet that I can uh, kind of manipulate and share easily with other people that I'm collaborating with. So for a new sheet, I'll just type out sheets.new. We have this data in uh, an Excel format, .xlsx format. We want to import that. So I'll go to File and Import. I'm going to upload a new file. And I'll just drag it directly from the bottom bar where I had downloaded it. If it wasn't there, I could always drag it from my Downloads folder or select this blue button and then choose the file from there. So once I upload it, it's going to ask me what would I like to do? Create a new spreadsheet, insert new sheets, or replace spreadsheet. Um, starting on this spreadsheet from scratch, I'm going to go ahead and replace the spreadsheet. I'm going to go ahead and title this Master Schedule pivot table video demo and now I want to build some filtered tables that, that have some more specific information so I don't have to search through just this huge table make it a little bit more readable I'll click in the top left corner to highlight everything and under the insert menu I'm looking for pivot table It'll prompt me whether I want it in a new sheet or an existing sheet. I'm going to go ahead and say new sheet. And in this pivot table, it does have some suggested things uh, that I could do. But I'm actually going to do for the rows. That's where I want my roster list to be. So I'm going to add the teacher display information. And that lists every teacher here. I notice that it also has a blank box, so that's something I don't really want. I'm going to go ahead and filter out blanks. So if I go down to filters and then select teacher display, right now it's showing all items, but I'm going to remove blanks. That'll bump everything up a little bit. Across the columns here, I want to see the period, so I can kind of read left to right, period 1 through 7. So I'm going to add in columns, section schedule, period start. And as I do that, I notice that I have a 0 period, an 8th period, uh, some of these extra ones here as well, and a grand total. Well, first of all, I don't need totals either for the names or the periods. And I'm going to go ahead and filter, add a filter for uh, the school that I'm looking at. So this is why I pulled in the school name. And I'm going to start with Heritage High School. Click OK. I still have the zero period and the eighth period. So I'm going to add a filter on the periods remove those. So right now it's showing all items, but I'll remove the zeros and the eight. So now I have period one through seven listed for all these people. Now the key is what do I want to display in the middle of the table? So I'm going to do it a couple of different ways and then the third way that I do it I'll combine the two. So the first one Let's say we wanted to see what room they were in throughout the day. So we have room name, and I could just kind of put equals section info room name, but because uh, we're importing text and not some actual numerical value or some statistical value, uh, we have to do a calculated field. And we're not doing a sum, but actually custom. And then where it says formula, I need to put in the header from the table for the column that I want. So we want the room name. So I'm going to go to this header where it says section info underscore room name. I'll 
copy that, go back to my table, put it in here. And I give it a moment to update, and then we'll see everything in here. Now there's a few things that you'll probably notice is that uh, some pieces of information, for example, I see here on the line it says certificated sub. I don't need that in the teacher roster. Similarly, I don't need attendance. And sometimes you will see somebody listed more than once, um, maybe in a couple of different ways, and that could just be having to go through and clean up your, your data a little bit. Let's say instead of room name, I actually wanted to know what the course was that they were teaching. So instead of using section info room name, I would use the course info course name. So I'll copy that instead and paste it here. And again, I give it a moment to update and it shows me what they're teaching. So I'm kind of showing both things that you could put in there, but what if we wanted them both at the same time? Well, then we'd need a new column of data that has both of these things in it. So I'm going to just insert a new column here. And at the top, I'm going to call it the course name and room name. There's more than multiple ways that you could join these information. So I could just simply say equals this and this and when I do it that way it kind of puts them together but without a space or anything so let's say instead that I wanted a space in there now I could have that but what if I wanted them on separate lines well let's say I wanted the room name on top and the course name underneath. So I'll put the room name first, the F2, and then the B2 will be the course name. Well, instead of a space here, I can say C-H-A-R 10, and that's a carriage return, which means new line. When I do that, now it's gonna have the room name on top and then the course name underneath. Now, because I X'd out the first time it asked me to autocomplete and copy this formula all the way down, uh, it's not prompting me a second time. But I'm going to just go to this corner where I see the crosshairs show up and double click on that small box in the bottom right corner of the cell. And it will copy the formula all the way down. Now I'm going to use this combined one over in my pivot table. And again, we have to give it some time to update. And there we have it. Now, this is not necessarily easy to read. You could change the width of the column so it shows the full name. You could also do things like alternate shading. So if I were to do alternate alternating colors for the shading and that would help in reading the rows horizontally and then the last thing that, that I will often do is add some grid lines so if I put in the border and do all borders now I can read it a little bit easier Something that I notice is that when I look at these cells, it colored the cells white when they were formerly a dark color. But now to read that text where it says the 01 and 02 and so on, I'm going to make that text um, not white but a dark color so that it can show up. There we go. Now I have a schedule for a whole school. I could just name this sheet the same name as the school. You might be wondering, do I have to go through that whole pivot table process to repeat another tab sheet uh, for the same information? And no, once you kind of have one done, you can just make a duplicate by clicking the drop down arrow at the bottom of the sheet. And 
And the difference now is I just need to filter it to a different school. So instead of showing that first school, I'm going to check mark a different one and remove the check mark for the first school. There we go. So that's how to build a large pivot table schedule showing things like room numbers and course names using Infinite Campus and Google Sheets.